Hey everybody, this is Perch. Uh, what makes up a fake fan? Well, this uh, letter writer is asking sort of that question. Uh, let's get into it. It says, hey Perch, with all of the noise around Deadshot being race swapped in the, um, sorry, in the Suicide Squad movie, and just for a second, is there still noise about that? I mean, maybe, I, okay, so I'm sorry. Um, I know there's a Suicide Squad video game coming up. Um, but I, like, I, I the, as far as I know, we're talking about the Will Smith character in Suicide Squad. Is that, I mean, or has there been a more recent example? I mean, I'm, I'm not honestly asking because otherwise this is, uh, this is holding on to, it's holding on for a while. Um, anyway, uh, sorry, but we'll, we'll get back. We'll get back to this. Now. Um, or some of the more recent, sorry, I did try to or some of the more recent casting choices, like Namor, Namor, that's my Namor, um, or other characters in the MCU that are often either race or gender swapped, like Taskmaster. Uh, I, I like race or Taskmaster. I often see a number of outrage comic fans, that's in quotes, coming out of the woodwork to complain about how their favorite character has suddenly been ruined. I'm sorry, I have trouble believing that there's a lot of comic fans whose favorite character suddenly became MODOK, Ghost, Taskmaster, or Deadshot. These characters can't hold a solo book, and yet we're expected to believe that Disney has ruined somebody's childhood by changing the character that, let's, that, that, that comma, let's face it, nobody cared about in the first place. To me, these are fake comic book fans, even though some even though some of these same people call others fake geek girls and fake comic fans. Who's the real comic fan here? And or is everyone a fake fan? All right. Mel kind of broke down there at the end. Um, I was having to kind of paraphrase to go. Uh, or I can't read. One of those two. Um, so let me try and unpack a little bit of this. Um, one of the things that's been true for us. So first off, uh, a lot of us uh, like have a goldfish type memory, meaning we really only remember what's happened in the last five years or within our lifetimes at least, and nothing that happened before seemingly matters or we care about. Um, this is like, if, you, if we're going to get philosophical for a moment, to me, this is why you have, uh, you know, people trying to make protests bigger than they are. The reality, though, is that if you march with Martin Luther King for equality, it is not the same thing as having a protest over a new burrito store that is culturally appropriating Hispanic food. Those are not the same thing. And I think that uh, right now in culture, you have people who you know haven't fought a war, haven't dealt with Vietnam, haven't dealt with you know truly important protests like for civil rights or women's ability to vote. And you uh, you know so they're they're equating current protests to those major movements that they're not in any way the same. And I say, but you know, put it this way: if you if you are um, a millennial. You've grown up in, quite frankly, a very privileged time. You, you've grown up with a lot of uh, wealth and capability and the internet and all kinds of things that, you know, uh, people in previous generations, you were born in the 50s or 60s or 70s, you didn't have a lot of those capabilities. And so, you know, it, it's, it, again, it's just not this, it, your, your life has been more fortunate. And that's not to make you feel guilty or anything. It's just a recognition. A lot of people who came before you fought very, very hard to give you the kind of life and rights that you enjoy today. And so it kind of does them a little bit of a disservice to say, Hey, I'm going to protest. I, I, I don't know that, uh, you know, I'm going to protest women's basketball and kind of equate that to the civil rights march. It's, it's not the same. You can still, you're still you, you have a right to protest. Nobody's taken that away. But to say, you know, this is the cause of my time is just absurd. Uh, so why does this have to do with fake comic bands, fake girls? The, it, 
there's something that has been true forever, but we seem to forget it. And that's, um, if you go back into comic stores in the 80s, the 90s, whenever you go in there, people will bicker at each other over who's a bigger fan or who really knows the lore. And um, in some cases, comic book retailers, I mean, so much that became a cliche, if you know Matt Groening, um, he patterned a character in The Simpsons off of this in uh, Comic Store Guy. But before that, you had work is hell, life is hell. And you'd have these jokes about how the comic book uh, retailer, the guy behind the counter, would say, You're not, you don't know enough about this comic to be able to buy it. You've got to pass my test in order to be worthy of buying this comic. Stuff like that. There's been gatekeeping and, and who's the real fan forever. This, isn't, this wasn't invented with Twitter. And I say that as important context because, you know, right now there's a lot of like, there's a lot of people who sl- who slur or slander and, and throw around a lot of slurs around who's the real comic fan, what do you know about comics? And it, it isn't particularly productive. It wasn't in the 80s and 90s because it, you know, it, it basically sent a lot of people away from enjoying comics. Uh, new readers who could have become lifelong comic fans, but they just didn't want to put up this bullshit that would go on inside the stores. So, um, you know, I, I, again, that's how I feel about that behavior, just, just for what it's worth. Um, I find it ludicrous uh, when, um, you know, Marvel makes a boneheaded casting decision and people lose their minds over it, like Ghost. Um, I, I mean, that was a, Ghost is a kind of an interesting character, but they went an entirely different direction in the casting. Um, you know, you went from uh, what I think was a nerdy kind of, you know, uh, hyper paranoid, potentially looked like he was on heroin, uh, white dude, into a um, uh, African American woman who was uh, what was it? What was her deal? I think she was a scientist, or she tried to be helped, and then she wasn't helped enough. Or I, I don't remember exactly her backstory. It was a very different. It was a very different origin. And I think it's it's fine. I mean, here's the thing. I don't understand why people can't criticize things just for what they are. They always want to pile on other things onto it when, you know, the original criticism was enough. In this case, it was, look, um, the, you know, it, it was a dumb, look, the back, they lost a lot in the backstory. You had an interesting backstory. You had a character with a lot of um, history to them. And you, you, you basically abandoned it for something a lot more shallow. Uh, that, that right there is a sin. Like that, that's, that's enough. That's, that's bad decision. It, you don't need to go into, yeah, they're trying to make it woke by having this villain be a black woman. Like, I mean, sure, but if I, if it, maybe, but it doesn't matter. Like, like you lost me at dumb casting choice, dumb origin choice. You just lost me there. The Taskmaster took a character that had a lot of interesting nuance around, you know, good guy, bad guy, Merc, uh, mostly bad guy, of course, um, dangerous threat. And you made them a kind of zombie autonoma, autonotom. I, I mean, like you, you just, you, you took so much depth out of the character. You took money off the table for yourself. So, I mean, yeah, we can go into, like, it really sucked that it was also a woman under there. I, I mean, sure, but you, again, you lost me at, you made a reasonably complex character into a shallow nothing character. Um, that, that, like, that, that's the, that's the end. Like, that, at that point, you're, you're done. Um. Uh, so I find it I find it stupid that we need to go in and and uh, basically criticize the character um, for a lot of other reasons when dumb casting choice is enough. Then I, I don't need more reasons to hate it. I have enough. At the same time, the counter argument of well, well, actually, it goes in with it. It's the you know also don't need to add in the this is my favorite character of all time and now they've destroyed. You know, my, my favorite character. I, I'm I'm calling bullshit on a bunch of these. No, you know, your favorite character of all time was not one of the Eternals that they jacked up in the movie. I'm sure there's somebody out there because everybody, every character has some fan somewhere. But 
you know, all these people that come out of the woodwork to talk about how they, uh, that this is, this is their favorite character and they've ruined it. No, I, I'm sorry. You, again, you don't, you don't have to justify why you don't like something with these absurd other claims. You know, nobody's favorite character is the ghost. I'm sure, again, I'm sure what one of you in the comments, like it was me. Okay. I, I'm willing to acknowledge one of you, but not like all these people are like, this is my favorite character and they did them dirty. Ah, bullshit. I'm calling bullshit on it. At the same time, equally annoying are the people who come in there and be like, the ghost has always been a black woman. Um, in Multiverse Earth, you know, 813 or whatever it happens to be, um, you know, the character is portrayed this way, and therefore it's just as valid as the character uh, who has been in 90, 99% of all the appearances. Yeah, no, no, again, so to me, all of this behavior, all this stuff equals fake fan. Because if you're having to bring up all this other auxiliary bullshit to kind of make your point, ah, you're not, you're not telling the truth. Just, just full stop that you're not, that you're not, uh, you're not what you claim. So anyway, that's my answer. Uh, who's the fake geek, fake fan? Probably lots of people, but also... Um, we should just ignore those people. We shouldn't get into purity tests in comics. What good is that? Anyway, I, I mean, again, you know, we want more readers. I'm trying to say, you know, you need to pass this this quiz before you like the character. I, I mean, what? But why? Is a passion there? Is a person arguing good good faith? Is a person not uh, trying to be a weird creep and just shame you for what you like? Then they're welcome in my book. Thanks for listening.